Greetings, my friends. This is Uncle Mike, and today is on the calendar system February the 21st. 21st, 2023. Mm. And joining me today is the lovely Miss Christy. Mm. Christy, would you like to say hello to everybody? Hello, everybody. <laughs> Okay, so um, this is our second, third recording that we've done this together. Yeah. Okay, mm -hmm. and we're starting to get the, the flow of it, I think, because mm -hmm. it's not normal. We talked about this last time, right? Well, they're about to see us talking about it. They're about this. to see it because that's what the purpose of what we're going to do right yes. here. Okay, so, yeah. so let's begin. Can you, yeah. will you set the stage and and explain what we were uh -huh. attempting to do and we'll walk people through where mm. things are now. So this is an introduction <clears throat> to another video that we thought would be important to share more publicly. We had shared it in a very small circle um, and what we're doing is reading a book um, and discussing the book and in the introduction to that book and us talking about the introduction I made reference to the last video you did about um, collapsing false timelines. Mm -hmm. And so for 30 minutes, we talk, we discuss your video okay. that's been posted in preparation for reading this book. So we're going to share that discussion, but we're not sharing the book discussion and the reading of the book because, and I think you want to tell this part of the story. So, okay. Um, <laughs> yes. Uh, the book we, we the book we read the introduction and chapter one with the plan on reading all the chapters. Mm -hmm. It's a short book. It is a story waiting to pierce you. And it's a story. It is a book which I've made reference to many times, mm -hmm. talking about it on both the podcast and on this channel. And you've read the book, mm -hmm. and. I don't know, there's a lot of stuff to talk about. So it made sense. We wanted to share the book, read it, and do commentary mm -hmm. and so forth. And we put out the introduction and chapter one. I thought it was really good. Like, I liked what we did. I really thought it was, there, was mm -hmm. some, there was some meat there. Mm -hmm. And I got a, a message from the legal assistant. To Peter Kingsley. To Peter Kingsley, the author. And it was, it was like the sweetest cease and desist letter ever written. <laughs> like it was like, it was, I would imagine it's a difficult place because obviously um, we're fans of Peter's work yeah. and that's why we're doing, we're reading his, his, his work aloud, but they're like, you can't do this. Like, just, just stop it. Just don't, don't put us in the uncomfortable situation of having to come down on you. Having to come down there to Bechtelsville. Having to come down there to Bechtelsville. But there was a little bit of a caveat. What was the caveat? Without prior written permission. Without prior written permission. So Michael has entered into legal negotiations <laughs> with the legal assistant of Peter Kingsley. But we don't know. We don't know how. We don't, don't know how it's going to turn out. We don't know how legit we that this person is. is and as, there's that as Peter's legal assistant. Right. Because it was just like some random Gmail account. Right. I mean, maybe, maybe, but we'll see, we'll see. So there's... He might be like in his own story. He might be in his own story. So what we do have following this conversation mm. right here is um, we're gonna show the, the introduction mm. of that video, which was just you and I talking. Right. And I think I introduced you to everyone in the same way I just introduced you right now. A little and bit. A little bit. Yeah. So there's a little bit of like Groundhog's Day going on. Groundhog's Day, how perfect. Perfect. Talk about collapsing false timelines. Talking about collapsing false timelines. And I guess we, this might be a good segue that um, based on all of the feedback and the comments from the 30 minute collapsing false timelines video, mm -hmm. um, it may, it, it, it sounded like people were excited for more discussion around that. Okay. Almost like a like some people like where like where's the study group? Can I join? Um, how do I come on board? Because you said you talked about fellowship of the boards and like come on board and need an invitation. Mm -hmm. um, and so, based on those comments, 
um, we decided to take that 30 minutes of that and post it up because A Story Waiting to Pierce You is a great book study follow-up to your Collapsing False Timelines video. Okay. Right? Yeah. So study group is on its way. We're just caught up in a little bit of legal negotiations uh, to have it posted publicly. But that doesn't mean that we're not thinking about ways that we could still do a small group or um, host online community that cultivates on the ground community around this book. Because it further, it takes it, it takes things like 20 times, 20 steps further, like in the collapsing false timelines conversation. Okay. Well, can, let's, can we tie that to the fellowship of the board? <clears throat> totally. Right. So, whew, let me put me on the spot. Um, let me pause you for a moment and yeah. you get your, your thoughts. So, um, this is... The, oh, you... Go ahead. I make those videos and I kind of have like an idea in my head of what I'm going to say. Uh-huh. And then I start talking. Like, there's nothing normal about, like, I like people and I like to talk. But, like, the video camera thing was really something which was, a, you know, a skill which I had to learn how to do. Like, I can do podcasting, talking to someone is really easy. Mm -hmm. But, like, the video camera, like, one on, on technology was not. And so the reason I say that is, like, I start talking, I got no idea what's, what I'm going to say. And I have no memory of what I said. And so what has happened, what has happened historically is like I say things and then people are like, oh, well, you said that. And you're going to do this. Or like, and it never gets done. And it never gets done, like probably for a variety of reasons. But one of it and like probably the, the, the best one is I just don't even remember what I said. Mm -hmm. Even though like in the time, like I, I was, you know, it felt very like authentic mm -hmm. to say that. Mm -hmm. So... The reason, like, there's a variety of reasons why you're sitting here right now, but what, but one of the reasons is, is you provide a grounding that if you were not there, like, it would just, like, be me talking to video cameras and people are going to be left watching it. Like, okay, well, how can I come on a board? And I'm like, I don't really remember. Did I say that? Did I? <laughs> but, like, you know, you, you, were, you make this happen. And so... So I'm, I'm grateful for that because I wouldn't have said something like mm -hmm. that unless obviously I want to go mm -hmm. and cultivate something more than just like uh, uh, um, a channel, a nut job talking on the, on the, <laughs> on the, on the, on the AI bot. Um, and so what you have done and, and like I never respond I don't look at the comments on YouTube uh, sometimes I do but I try not to but I certainly never respond to anything mm -hmm. um, and I started that policy just because I did not want to mm -hmm. I started that policy for a variety yeah. of reasons but now you're responding to things so if anyone ever <laughs> like says like a, it's me <laughs> it's, it's Christy I, I try to respond to emails but but that's just like you know the that communication has not been in my, my, my wheelhouse, but going forward with what mm -hmm. we're doing, um, I see that, that a lot of the stuff that has happened before, really before what this past year, I've made reference a lot in the, the few videos which I've made since, since the, the Freemasonic presentation mm -hmm. in January 2022. Mm -hmm. This past year has been something for me personally like moving through something mm -hmm. and now there's a grounding like and now there's like the you know it's the next book in the tr mm. in like the series of mm. books mm. and this is what it looks like and like you know you're the character who's now appeared within it and like you know and this is like part of what you bring to it is a lot of the stuff which had never really materialized or had just been showcased in a certain way mm -hmm. is now finding um you know the yeah the, you're helping build the structure yeah. where maybe ah. I had uh, uh, prepared the soil or the mm. the ground for it beforehand. So that that is what what I think we're we're stepping into, yeah. like me, you, and and all of the folks who are who are watching wherever they watch. Confessions from a YouTube star. <laughs> okay. Um, and, and I want to say this, and, and I think this is really important, and so this, this is either an indication of my naivete uh -huh. or um, 
or what I think is probably uh, um, uh, um, a reflection of, of, of like the authenticity and of and I talked a little bit about our about our coming together two videos ago right. go but when you and I met you had no idea that that any of this thing was was nope, no. I did not know you, you were did a not, YouTube star or well, a podcast or, or anything like I didn't that. Didn't know you. Yeah, you just thought like I was like some dude hanging out in a tent. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so so like this this has happened like you know this was not part of your of of your mm -hmm. master plan. So that's why I mean my naivete. Like this was either part of your master plan, and I have no idea, and I'm just walking into it, <laughs> or. <laughs> Okay, so that being said, so let's go yes. back to the Fellowship of the Board. Is right. that what we're so, going to talk about? Yeah, you gave me lots of time to gather okay. my thoughts. Okay, all right. Um, so Michael's created these flashcards. This is just one of them. A long time ago. Show the back of it. So, and this is like, see, he's like, uh, there we go. So it was a Susquehanna alchemy thing. I made these in 2018. You made these in 2018. No one's ever looked at him. So uh, he's got these flashcards, and they're kind of like Susquehanna alchemy, like mystery school flashcards. All right. Anyways, I've been playing with them. Um, and I'm going to do something with them. and But this one I have put in my planner, uh, which hopefully we'll be sharing someday soon because people are interested in how you track time, Mr. Right. Collapsing False Timelines. Anyways, the human being and the human experience... So you're reading the card right I'm now? I'm reading the card. The human being and the human experience is changing before our eyes. Examples. Transhumanism, artificial intelligence, GMOs, gender fluidity, loss of privacy, global governance, new monetary systems, virtual reality, and more. 2018. And that was 2018. Right. COVID hadn't even come about yet. That was right when I put out all of, there's, I think it's still available, all of the, the timeline videos from, mm. 20, from 1945 to 2045. And I, I did this in 2018. I, wrote 20, I did a whole video called 2020, the next big thing. I didn't know what it was going to be, uh -huh. but, but I mean, I'm not claiming, I'm not claiming like <laughs> anyone who's paid attention could have picked out 2020. But, but anyway, so yes, this was all written in that time period. And yes. it's fun for me to look back at this like in hindsight. This I, this came this card and these examples in mm -hmm. 2018 were like r like the ripe peak of mm -hmm. conspiracy theory. Right. 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 So it's almost like 2022, four years later, we're now like what you call post conspiracy. Yes, post conspiracy theory. Post conspiracy theory. Yeah, right, theory is right. the key word. Yes. Okay. And we can talk more about that in right. another time. But and all of these ideas, like in 2018, like I wasn't the only one having them. Right. I'm just the only one who wrote it on a card. You wrote it on a flashcard <laughs> that you handmade. All driven and sold by people you will likely never meet or consult, or they won't consult your opinion. Mm -hmm. All this stuff. But anyways, the, the thing that grips me the most is at the very bottom, highlighted in green, how do you find stability in times of great change? And uh, I think you said, maybe it's, I mean, it's in our astrology that I'm, I have a more grounded energy. Mm -hmm. um, and you were saying, like, I bring a groundedness mm -hmm. to the, what you, what you put out. Mm -hmm. Your intentions, mm -hmm. um, and so fellowship of the boards. Okay. So fellowship of the boards is something that we co-created mm -hmm. as a monthly opportunity for people to come together on the ground locally, wherever we are, mm -hmm. and we'll talk about where we're going in March, mm -hmm. um, and come together online from different time zones, etc., to practice using the starboard to practice natural astrology to practice. You want to jump in? Well, I think it's just that. Um, first off, like you came up with the phrase "fellowship, fellowship of, of the, the boards. boards." I thought that was kind of funny, and I don't, um, <clears throat> obviously because of the, you know, the tongue in cheek of fellowship of the rings. Exactly. Oh, um, it is a ring. Yeah, the, mm. there, there's and and it's. Like all of this is on, unf it's unfolding. Like yeah. there's, like there's, there's not a master plan that I have necessarily been Nor privy I. to. 
but it's this idea, we've done it how many times right now? I want to say three or four times. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And all it is, is, um, well, taking a, a, a step back, it is the practice of natural astrology mm -hmm. and, and the definition of natural astrology, perhaps that's another conversation or another video, but it's not about narratives. Like natural mm -hmm. astrology is about bearings. Yeah. Like where yes. are you? Grounding. And grounding. Yes. And it is a conscious movement outside of, of false time. Mm -hmm. um, and I talked about this in the video. I'm like, false timelines as a, as a buzzword or as a phrase has always captured my attention. Like, I was like, oh, there's something there, but I'm also, like, I had a problem with that. But like, what do you mean false time? What's the real mm -hmm. time? And then mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. through just, like, paying attention and realizing, oh, well, false timeline is any sort of concept of time based upon something that doesn't exist, mm -hmm. that makes sense. Natural astrology goes back to observable, knowable um, mm -hmm. rhythms, mm -hmm which we could use as, as, you know, our markers of time. Mm -hmm. And so coming together as a group, right. because this experience is a collective consensus reality mm -hmm. and coming back and just like the people who are in it, mm -hmm. who are participating, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. we're all doing the same thing. We've got a board, mm -hmm. you know, hopefully doing it in person, mm -hmm. um, but even remotely. Uh, and we are, we are building upon the board what is in the sky at the moment that we're building it. Like it's a reflection, quite literally, as above, so below. And we're linking it here. Mm -hmm. We understand what we're doing. Mm -hmm. We're linking it with our eyes if we're able to look out in the sky and see what we're seeing. We're, with our hands, all of that sort of stuff. And we're doing it with an appreciation of the mystery of the experience. Right. Right. Like, yeah, I don't know what we're doing. Like, I know how we're doing it. Yeah. And that is enough. Yeah. And that is like stepping into, we know we're creating something. We understand how it's being created. And we're also doing it very much like with the understanding, like, I don't necessarily want to build my future mm. upon, like, you know, that's what these cards are. Like, on all of this transhumanism, artificial intelligence, loss of privacy, global government, driven and sold by people who we've never met. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like, okay, like, like, like that's the, the post-conspiracy theory mm -hmm. era. Mm -hmm. It's like, okay, we know that. We know it's true. Now what? You right. can't continue to deconstruct the Super Bowl halftime show because then you're just caught up in it. Like, right. like, and so it's like, well, what do you do? And this is just one way. And that's what the fellowship of the boards is. Mm -hmm. And so like, it's fun. Mm -hmm. It's real. Mm -hmm. um, it's not fantastic. Like, I, I feel like I get videos from friends sometimes and it's like, you leave kind of, I, you can leave feeling like, wow, the world is changing. It's so exciting. And it's like a lot of hot air, though. Like, mm -hmm. for me, it feels right, like a lot right, of hot air. And it's, right. like, very fantastic. Right. Um, and it does something to, like, the story, the narrative that the person is, is giving over YouTube is, like, sensationalized. Yes. Um, and Fellowship of the Boards is not that. It's almost desensationalizing the experience of, like, this whole astrology field. Mm -hmm. um, how do you find stability in times of great change? It's fellowship. Mm. So I'm trying to get to like concrete. How do you stabilize? Fellowship, mm -hmm. um, grounding, mm -hmm. and like grounding is like, there's lots of ways to do that, but what we're doing is we're grounding in this like physical board mm -hmm. and this experience that like we can all be doing this together mm -hmm. and creating synergy mm -hmm. around all these concepts mm -hmm. and actually grounding these concepts that's the meta paradigm shift mm -hmm. and we can't do it alone mm -hmm. and we're also like you said like I think you said this like uh, you know the the possible has been tried I want to try the impossible. I don't know if you said that or if someone was just quoting that mm -hmm. on your YouTube comments. Um, I got no idea what the words are that come out of my mouth. <laughs> I know, I know. Um, but and so we're we're it's not scripted, right? Like right, like we're not we're not using a model. We're not we're just kind of like using feedback loops. Mm. 
right? And so there's feedback loops with everyone who's watching and listening and in honoring those feedback loops, connecting them together in with fellowship of the boards and with this question of how do you find stability in times of great change? How do you continue evolving yourself? And how do you continue being human when like the very basis of being human is changing, mm. right? Mm. How do you stay in this body? Right. Anyways, we talk a little bit about that in a minute in the intro to the book, or maybe we talked about it in the discussion of the book, I don't remember. Um, so one of the ways that we're wanting to connect people is um, using Telegram. Um, so we have some people's emails already, mm -hmm. um, and we're asking people to download Telegram. Now this, and, and yes, because this would never happen if it wasn't Because this would not you. happen. Because, but I understand the importance. I, you, you really helped me with the uh, online. I'm like, I... Right. Online to on ground. And yes. so this so I just yes. need to say that like 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 talking about creating a telegram group, like it it pains me in a certain way. Like yes. I'm like, oh my god. But And I it's understand. not something I'm excited about doing. But we have people from Australia, from the West Coast, from like all from Florida. So mm -hmm. we have people all over the place. Right. And the ideal the idea um, is to come on board. Right. And so to come, and so the Telegram group, we would use Facebook, but I won't use we Facebook. We wouldn't like we we wouldn't use Facebook, which is why we're not using it. Right. We would we would use right. the popular right. paradigm, but right. the whole point of this is to not lean on the popular paradigm because the popular paradigm is taking us out of right. our right. natural experience. That's the paradox of this moment. Is the very like <laughs> like. Yes, that's, there's a paradox. Which is, so we're going to be in Florida in March. Mm -hmm. We'll be traveling down. We're driving down to Florida mm -hmm. um, to connect with a on-the-ground community that we've already begun building mm -hmm. um, in West Palm mm -hmm. Beach area. Mm -hmm. um, so, so Telegram and maybe Instagram are places where we want to keep people po keep people up to date mm -hmm. of where we're at where the fellowship of the boards is happening on the ground mm -hmm. because we don't want to create just an online community. Mm -hmm. We want to cultivate almost this like web of people who like your community can get a board, like a small group of people. It doesn't mm -hmm. have to just be an individual. You can group. make your own. You, you don't can have to make get, your right, own. I'll, exactly. It's not like a, 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 a it's not the idea for a every, patented yeah. like like concept. And it's not the idea that every single person in the world has a star right. board, but that people are gathering in this way, mm -hmm. aligning their kind of belief systems with this grounded energy of like something that's totally outside mm -hmm. of the paradigm, mm -hmm. not not to get away, not to right. run away, mm -hmm. but to come out and have this meta experience and put new hands. Mm -hmm to the experience that is changing before our Can I happen right here? Yes. Okay, so when you were talking about the, the original question, how do you find stability in great change? And you went to the starboard and you, you mentioned mm -hmm. a couple things. The starboard gives you bearings. Mm -hmm. That's that's the, mm -hmm. this is a mystery. No mm -hmm. one knows who and mm -hmm. how and where. Walking in the dark. We're walking in the dark. So whatever bearings we can get, and the bearings that we've been told, that we've been given, are made up bearings. It's right. not grounded on anything. Right. It's like, it's grounded on a floating cloud. That's why, like, the time that's not based upon what you can see, like, mm -hmm. why it's so easy to manipulate people who tie their consciousness to it, because it's not grounded. Uh -huh. Yes. The, 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 the practice of natural astrology independently, like even outside of like fellowship of the board provides bearings. You understand for whatever that is, at least that I'm grounded there. Yes. It's the most real I got. That could all be bullshit, but it's the most, it's starting from yeah. somewhere which we understand. So the bearings is really, really mm. important. Mm -hmm. Um, there's a second thing which I wanted to say, but I just got too excited about that. Um, <laughs> you, got, you got me swept away too in it. So, Fellowship of the Boards. Fellowship of the Boards. Oh, the, this is the other thing. So, oh. so we, you and I have been talking about this, and you're like, well, what about this great idea, and what about this great idea? I'm like, well, let me go and piss all over that idea because it has to do with technology. I'm not going to do that. <laughs> well, you got, well, Facebook. I'm like, I can't do Facebook because, okay. like, 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 all this stuff. Like, I'm saying this. You're like, yeah, I understand, but, but like, it, there's a bigger picture. I'm like, eh, eh, eh. So, so, 
Telegram, like I've heard of it, like I know it exists, uh -huh. uh, but we don't really have experience with it. I'm like, okay, that feels like, and we're figuring out like yeah. how, we're figuring out what Fellowship of the Boards is. Like it's both a place to share information, to like do all the like, the, like online sort of thing. Mm -hmm. um, and it's utilizing what is available to humanity at this time. Mm -hmm. um, and, mm -hmm. but, but the paradox which I have is all of the technology from the beginning is anti-human, anti-earth. Like, even if you do something nice on it, it's still based upon all of the slave labor, all of the... It's a, it's a tool of warfare. You can't mm. build paradise on a tool of warfare. Mm -hmm. So it's like, I have to be away, aware of that, and I can't be mm -hmm. out of integrity with what I know to then say, like, oh, well, let's go use, you know, like, the Facebook or whatever. So that being said, Telegram... Like, when you said that, when you brought that up, I'm like, okay, that's something which I know I can lean into and yeah. be okay with until we don't need to use it anymore. But this is why. Telegram is a play on the very first beginning of the technology. Like, if you go back in time and you look at what people were saying about Telegram, uh, mm -hmm. I read this a really good analysis on, like, this guy saying, like, the world changed with the invention of the Telegram because this is when the speed of thought went faster than the ability to deliver it, like, uh -huh. through the Telegram, so the speed of communication. Yeah. And that's when, like, the, the, qu well, the quantum shift began. Um, I've talked a lot about, or maybe a little bit about, the Neo-Luddite philosophy. Mm -hmm. And that is, how do we deal with the paradox of we are helplessly addicted to technology and we only know our way around reality right now through technology, but also recognizing, like, if we don't get off this bus, yeah. uh, it's going to bring us to a station we don't want to go to. And so the Neo-Luddite philosophy, to me, has always been when given, when given the opportunity to lean away from the technology, mm -hmm. to, to embrace that. So for me, that's been notebooking has been one mm, example. Like, yes. if I don't need to upgrade, well, then I don't upgrade. Like, if I don't need to... Do so Telegram by name, in the same way that Amazon as a mm -hmm. online marketplace is a bastardization of river magic, mm -hmm. Telegram by name is also like, hey, this is a way to lean back. Like, yeah, it's still technology, yeah. but we're going back, even if it's just in the in the spoken the spoken Kabbalah, the mm -hmm. phonetics mm -hmm. of it all. Mm -hmm. So, so that's why why the Telegram. Yeah. I think, to me personally, if that means anything. Like you know that that that. Um, that's going to be where we begin. And now going back to on the ground reality, yeah. it being um, the latter part of February, we're going to be doing a trip down to Mar or to Florida, mm -hmm. driving down there. We did a similar trip in November, mm -hmm. so that was um, February, January. So that was about 120 day cycles ago. Mm -hmm. um, and we'll be returning to that. We'll be talking more about that in the future, but yeah. we'll be putting those dates or maybe that information yes. on the Telegram. Uh, love to meet with people mm -hmm. uh, like Liz Cat. We're definitely going to see her, some mm -hmm. of the other people we've met before, but mm -hmm. building upon that. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. Yeah. And so I think we'll use Instagram and Telegram. Okay. The Grams. Yeah, the Grams. That's how I made that. that. We're going to use Instagram and Telegram to keep people posted on mm -hmm. where we're on the ground. Because mm -hmm. um, we're most, we are interested in, in, in so sharing more about natural astrology. It's like not just about fellowship and connecting, but, right. but beginning to change like full on belief systems and mm -hmm. like accessing a knowing that's not been taught anywhere else. Right, right. Um, and doing that in community, doing that in connection yes. on the ground. There will you're gonna continue to do content. We're gonna, you know, I actually want to take something, take these cards and make right. something out of them. Right. Um, so stuff will still be offered online. Like mm -hmm. we are cultivating online community mm -hmm. for the purposes of collapsing false timeline and getting your individual bearings in mm -hmm. that. Because it would be, it would just be purely destructive of us to say just like collapse the false timeline and not then also follow up with like, and the with the creation destruction creation right like and here's how you get your bearings, 
here's how you find stabilization amidst the chaos. Right, like, right. It's got to be both and. So, so to that, um, it's, it's, to me, what, 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 what my compass is, is, you know, the, the, the teaching and practice of natural astrology and the telling of land story. Mm, and specifically, okay. like the primary land story, yeah. or at least for me, which is which is the Susquehanna mystery, and what so the, one slight pivot on that Susquehanna mystery that that's a story I'm gonna I want to be telling more and more, and what uh, because that's a story which I know, mm -hmm. and I feel that I can tell that, um, and it's universally important, and it's because of its connection to computers and to all of these things which are universally touching yeah. us, but then also for the purpose of of collapsing false storylines, collapsing false timelines, and collapsing false storylines. Mm -hmm. For what purpose? To create the space for a meta paradigm shift. Mm -hmm. I don't know what the meta paradigm mm -hmm. shift is. I want to go back to this one last, like this is the last thing I want to say for our video right here. Mm -hmm. Human, the, the vessel of the human being is changing. Mm -hmm. Like, it is not the same. Like, 1940s mm -hmm. human being is not 2023 20, human being. Mm -hmm. For better, for worse, because of the effects of vaccines, GMOs, EMFs, all of that stuff, it changes this. That is an undeniable truth. We can't yeah. go back to that. Um, part of that changing is to create, is to continue to down a path of transhumanism where mm -hmm. the, the vessel is to blend with an art with a manufactured entity, but that is not a, a, a functional truth that that is going to be the destination. The only functional truth is that the human being is changing, mm -hmm. and that mm -hmm. change could be in other ways, mm -hmm. and that ties into this meta-paradigm shift. All that the collapse of time, the timeline, false timelines and false storylines, mm -hmm. and the collapse by learning natural astrology and appreciating what land story truly means mm -hmm. creates the space for the meta paradigm shift to happen. Mm -hmm. And that is going to, like what appears to be to my eyes mm -hmm. is going to include a different way of being human and relating to this in a different way. Mm -hmm. What that exactly mm -hmm. is, I don't know. We're figuring this out together. Mm -hmm. But how do we go and find stability? Through yeah. our bearings, through our fellowship, and through like understanding kind of what is happening. Changing our consciousness. Change it well, exactly. Allowing our consciousness, I think, to change us. But Ooh, we're saying yes. the same thing. Well said. Um, but that is in my yes. you know, the motivation for doing all of this is that is yeah is to collapse not for collapse reason, yes. but to collapse to make the space so that the next iteration is able to come about. And it's an inside job. And it's an inside job. So yeah, 9-11 inside job. No. And then but but like like that's In what we got right. But that's what the joke of the inside uh, job yes, has always yes, been yes, that. Yes. And then here's the other thing to tie this full circle. That is the importance of a story waiting to pierce you. It's ah, all about the rise and the fall. Yes. And so like when you hear it told from that <laughs> way, it makes you appreciate like that's what's happening right now. Right. And it's not something fantastical. That's what I want to get. Yes. I love like mm -hmm. uh, like the star or the fellowship of the board on a certain level is not fantastical. It is the most grounded, mundane sort of thing in the world. Like when you want to go and like get really deep into astrology narratives, that's mm -hmm. fantastical. We're going down to the mystery, like we're understanding our bearings. But what I hope that I have demonstrated over the past year is like when you do this, fantastical shit happens. <laughs> mm-hmm. So yeah. It is but, so, true. It is true. It so Right, so like fellowship of the boards, there's not like a lot of sensational things going on. Flying unicorns, yeah. There's no flying unicorns or narwhals floating across the screen. But I think like what we're slowly building each time is that people then bring their personal, like what's going on for them. Mm -hmm. or, or even just behind the screen, like each of us is bringing an energy field to mm -hmm. that, even if it's not being said, like... Our personal stories are being purified. Mm -hmm. Our personal stories are being supported and encouraged, are, are changing mm -hmm. because of this practice. Right. 
Um, and that, I think, is what this, the sensational part is about this, is that you can show up to Fellowship of the Boards and like have this mundane experience while being in the privacy and the grounded security of your own inner world and your own being, knowing that this board and this practice means like a million stories to you as an individual, mm -hmm. but we're not focused on that in the practice. Mm -hmm. We're focused on like the the very practical bearings tools. Mm -hmm. um, and in so doing, we're cultivating an appreciation. I was just talking about this um, this morning on the on the podcast that didn't record. <laughs> um, more on that later. Um, Kaylin and I were talking about uh, in this great change, it's like in we as individuals, like our identities completely collapse. Like this is not about destroying and bringing down, I'm, in part it is, but like it's not about outer destruction mm -hmm. or collapse. It's about inner collapse right. and inner destruction, fully releasing right. whatever future you thought was going to be or whatever uh -huh. future you could imagine. Mm -hmm. If you can imagine it, it's not a meta paradigm shift, right. like you said. Right. Um, but that said, we are still cultivating on the ground, online, in fellowship, an appreciation for the container that this form and mm -hmm. this life and mm -hmm. this false timeline provides. The mystery. This mystery, the mystery of experience. Right, right. Without all of this falsity, right. without all this darkness, mm -hmm. there would be no mystery. Right. And the whole fun of it is that there's mystery. The whole fun of the Fellowship of the Boards for me is like, right. there's so much going on in the lives of the people behind these boards. Right. But... You know, it's like not until you're on the ground and you walk away from the board that you're going to dive into that mystery personally with someone. But there's a really safe, mm -hmm. very high and deep and holistic way mm -hmm. for people to bring bring themselves together in this really vulnerable time mm -hmm. of great change where it feels chaotic. And this is the way that we bring stability right? without relying on... Uh, what's what's telegram without, without relying on what's been provided for us and we are going to rely on telegram so um this is my wrap up all right uh if you're watching this um and you would like to be invited to the telegram online community which is going to help us cultivate the on the ground community as well please put your email in the um uh, in the the messages underneath this youtube video do we want that? I wouldn't want to do that. Or can you, do people do that? Do they want to send us? Some, do they want to have? Do we want to have them send us the email? Let's or, have them do that. Let's have or them do that. send send your send an email to Susquehanna Alchemy at gmail .com. Right, and you could go to susquehannaalchemy.com because there's like that. And that you can go form. to susquehannaalchemy.com. Right. So there are three ways that you can leave us your email address so that we can send you um, the Telegram link to our Telegram channel. Um, and that would be to leave your email underneath here, underneath the YouTube, if you want to, susquehannaalchemy at gmail.com, mm -hmm. susquehannaalchemy.com, there's a mm -hmm. contact form. Right. So we will look out for emails on all right. of those various right. places. I will do that. You'll do that because I'm, I'm not going to do that. <laughs> I'll do that because we're, we are grateful to um, be walking this journey with other folks. Yeah. 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 Um, the next time we do this, can we share the bag and the eph the ephemeris? The Tell bag. Tell their stories. Oh yeah. Because that's kind of cool. Yeah. Yeah. All okay. right. That'll be the next thing. More to come. All right, <laughs> um, friends. Like, this is like physically. When I do the recording and I'm looking at the camera, like if you if you you know a lot of people I think who watch these videos they make their own videos. Um, I find it very like. I feel sick afterwards because oh, this is so much better like to do this with someone else so oh. so uh, <laughs> I like this so much better I don't know if you guys can pick that up but um, this is where we are this is book three I think this is book three we're on book three right now so uh, um, how do we wrap this up until next time yeah welcome to our kitchen right here is our, our dining room table we're looking forward to having Hosting some interesting, more interesting conversations right yeah, here yeah. in the Bechtelsville kitchen. There we go. <laughs> and we'll tell the story a little bit later about Bechtelsville and Boyerstown. Maybe in future episodes. <laughs> yeah.
right. There's so many stories to tell. All right. All right. Thank you. Greetings, friends. Uncle Mike here. And we got a special little treat today because we've got a guest. Am I the treat? <laughs> You're the treat. All right. <laughs> uh, uh, that is fun. So <laughs> our guest today is Christy. Mm -hmm. Christy, would you like to say hi to the camera? Hi, camera. And, and friends. And friends. Mm -hmm. It's strange to do this, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Because there are real people on the other side somewhere watching this mm -hmm. at a time different than us recording, mm -hmm. but we have to act as if they're there right now. <laughs> it's really unnatural in certain ways. Yeah, that just makes my heart race. Yeah, it, it takes a while. Uh, I still, to this date, do a lot mm -hmm. of false starts before I actually am able to get going whenever I do a recording. Mm. You know, I prefer an audience of 500 than a camera. Totally, <laughs> totally, totally, totally. And I've done that, but the camera is like, maybe it's because it's an audience of potentially 5,000. Uh, I think it's the fact that there's no feedback. Oh, yeah, we're in like a vacuum. Right, this, feels, this doesn't feel real. Oh, yeah. But there's a knowing. Blah. Okay. Okay, so, mm -hmm. that being said, thank you for joining me today. Mm -hmm. <laughs> And what we're going to do today, friends, mm -hmm. is there's a, there's a book which I've made reference to mm -hmm. many times over the years. The, the book is called A Story Waiting to Pierce You, Mongolia, Tibet, and the Destiny of the Western World. And it's written by Peter Kingsley. And you and I mm -hmm. are going to read it. Together. Together. I'm curious why you've brought the book up so many times in the past. Ah, uh, for many reasons, mm -hmm. it's meaningful. You've brought it up on this podcast? This podcast, other podcasts, okay. yes. It's, mm -hmm. a, it's a touch point, both in terms mm -hmm. of how it came into my life, mm -hmm. but then also the story itself. Mm -hmm. And... I brought it up in the past because whatever I was talking about at the time, this book made reference. It was mm. a, oh, whatever, the, whatever that detail was I was talking about, <clears throat> I was able to use this story as an example mm -hmm. for why there's legitimacy or, or maybe mm -hmm. greater clarity into the point mm -hmm. I was trying to make at that time. Is it at all situated in like a handbook? For the apocalypse would this be like an insert in the handbook so so okay so yes <laughs> so this we're, we're recording this for video but this is also going to be on audio yes and the audio is the 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 podcast the audio only podcast which i do with mark steves mm -hmm. titled your handbook for the apocalypse mm -hmm. and for those of you who watched who are watching this as a video, the videos get considerably more eyeballs than people who listen to mm. the the podcast. So I know that a lot of people don't even know the podcast exists. That's what I'm trying to say. Oh. Who, who are watching this right now. So that being said, there's a podcast. It's called Your Handbook for the Apocalypse. And yes, like on a surface level, mm -hmm. this book is about the rise and falls of civilization. The turning of apocalypses. The turning of apocalypses. Apo Apocalypse. Yes. Apocalypse is, um, oh, I can't remember what it is. And, uh, it, someone broke that word down from us uh, about it being elliptical and like oh, the circular wow. nature. But apocalypse actually means revealing. Like that's what an apocalypse is. Revealing. A revealing. Wow. So the story, the biblical mm -hmm. context mm -hmm. is the apocalypse marks mm -hmm. the end of an age, however you want to define yeah. an age, and when that age occurs, mm -hmm. there's a revelation, a revealing. Or an unveiling. Or an unveiling. <laughs> All, exactly, exactly. So, so this book <clears throat> talks about that concept mm -hmm. in a different time, uh -huh. like the rising and falling of civilization. So... It kind of makes sense that way in terms of if the book is, or the podcast uh -huh. is called, 
your handbook for the apocalypse and mm -hmm. like it's apocalyptic. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. to me, mm -hmm. there's a there's something deeper within the story, mm -hmm. more mystical, more. And what I mean by mystical, I mean mystery. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if we can necessarily define what that is, but you can feel it. Mm -hmm. But it ties into that podcast on that level as well. I think that your video that you recorded yesterday will probably go out before this video. Okay. So I don't think that, that I'm, I don't think this is a, um, what's that called when you give away the... Spoiler? Spoiler. I don't think this is a spoiler. Okay. Um, <clears throat> there's so many integration points here. What were you just saying about this? About how it ties in apocalypse like as a concept of apocalypse yeah. and cycles. Yeah. And then there's also multiple meanings within the book, like or, or multiple purposes. Like there's the actual surface level story. Oh, I remember. So there's a part in the video that you recorded yesterday that I caught where you talk. Oh, and you also said this to the students, the college students, that when you collapse the false timeline, mm -hmm. um, there's something else underneath you. There's something that catches you. Right. I mean, you're, you're speaking to f having faith a bit mm -hmm. in, like, the things beyond us mm -hmm. and creating a timeline around what's seeable and knowable mm -hmm. and real rhythms and mm -hmm. real organic rhythms. Um, that is what this book does. Okay. This book takes apocalypse, which is, like, full of false timelines, or full of, like, narratives. Mm -hmm. All the apocalyptic, apocalyptic narratives. Right. Right? It kind of, like, speaks to that. Okay. But it also brings in, and it says, like, there's this, like, underlying, like, river or ravine mm. that, like, all of those apocalyptic narratives crumble down into. Mm -hmm. And then you and I were talking about another integration point, because you've done Hijack, the mm -hmm. Hijacking Reality series, like, one, two, three, four, yes. five. Maybe five. <laughs> we were talking about hijacking, and in, in the books, a lot of the books that I've been reading and blogging about, they talk about reseeding. Okay. Like the reseeding of life. And then. S E E D or C R or both? S E E D. But okay. I like, I also like the other reseed. Right. Because it talks about the ebb and flow. Well, reseed is reveal. Yes. Like, like it's apocalyptic. And unveil. And um, this book, I've read this book. Um, this book came to you in a way that a lot of the books that I'm like writing about and breaking apart by blog are, it, they came to me in that way. Mm -hmm. So there's something in the book itself besides the words and, and the, the academia of it that is speaking to this like a spirit. There's like a spirit that comes alive. Mm -hmm. It just like comes alive and enters into mm -hmm. your life and that's the mystery. It's like, mm -hmm. how is this book like actually it's now like rearranging my life somehow mm -hmm. or it's bringing I mean I think that we'll get to see your arrow mm -hmm. it brings like brings to it, it actually is like pointing to things in your life and being like see that that's mm -hmm. what that is mm -hmm. see this 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 fits here so anyways hijacking receding your books my books all that you've done like all the work that you've done kind of like I feel like if you could boil it all down this book, like, hits the, the basic elements of hijacking, mm -hmm. receding life mm -hmm. in the cycle. Right. And then the mystery. Like, that. this right, is alchemy. Right, receding right. and hijacking, that's all alchemy tools. Right. And then you drop down into, like, all of that. Right. Just, it's a mystery. Right, <laughs> right. All of that just to say. And, and what you have, and all you can do is have faith. Yeah. Like, it's right, a mystery. Right. And you're not going to solve it. You're no. not going to solve it. Yeah. At the very best, you can understand that it's a ride. Yes. And you can understand kind of how the ride works. Yes. And yes. so I want to, before we get into this, I want to yeah. talk about, to me, the importance of stories and narratives. Because mm -hmm. I love to tell mm -hmm. stories. Mm -hmm. And at the same time, I'm the biggest critic of stories and the fact that I'm like, all stories are bullshit because they could all be retold. Like mm -hmm. every story, mm -hmm. even like the most factual description of what occurred, mm -hmm. there is an equally factual description of that same event uh -huh. where like the good guys are the bad guys. And then Absolutely. the, so, yeah. so there's no like, 
Okay, so going back to what you said about apocalypse, about how apocalypse in our current, mm -hmm. in our current Bibli, like Bible-based world, whether or not you're a follower of the Bible or not, like, mm -hmm. or whether you're a Jew, Christian, or Muslim, like the Bible has major, major influence on mm -hmm. so much of mm -hmm. how structure, mm -hmm. or the structure of our reality. And that story is, or that Bible is where we get a lot of this, like, apocalypse, revelation, oh, and that sort of okay. stuff. And that comes with baggage. Mm -hmm. It comes with all sorts of baggage. Mm -hmm. um, but it's just a story. Mm -hmm. Like, it may point to mm -hmm. what this book is about, the rising and falling of civilization, mm -hmm. which is ebbs and flows of life, the mm -hmm. receding of life and uh -huh. the receding of life. And that may and the be, hijacks. And the hijacks. So this is what the hijack is to me and what yeah. I wanted to go to. Like, well, what do you mean, Mike, by, by hijack? I'm like, well, I'm giving you a story. Uh -huh. And I'm telling you this is the narrative, which is the true narrative. Uh -huh. And uh -huh. when I'm telling you this is the true narrative, that's me hijacking it. That's uh -huh. me taking away your ability to come up with your own story. Yeah. Because this is, this is what I think why stories are so important to me as a storyteller and as someone who is... Uh, a student of consciousness and a student of the mystery is the realization that our human experiences are grounded in stories mm -hmm. and all of those stories are going to fall apart and that's not a good thing or a bad thing it's a nature of it yeah and so they all crumble down they're going to the crumble river, down they're all going to crumble the down. and that's the part mystery. of it and that's part of it and so once you <laughs> yes. begin to realize that yeah. then you can become like, okay, well, when they're hijacking it, they're telling me a scary story. Uh, and like, oh, that scares me. Uh, and like, and the fear, uh -huh, the fear uh -huh. is the antithesis of the faith of the experience. Yes. Right? Yes. It's like the fear is like the beating heart or yes. the, like the, like the, 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 and when we can begin to recognize the nature of stories and maybe receive them or tell them differently where maybe they're empowering, but then also not bullshitting ourselves uh -huh. by saying like, okay, well, this has to be true. Right, right. The only thing that's true is the story that you believe is going to become your inner world, which is your reference point for your experience. What is undoubtedly happening is our civilization is receding right now. <laughs> And there's going to be another story, right. and we could choose the stories, and in a way, you know, when we're really, really responsible for ourselves, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. we're our own storyteller. Mm. And that would be a sovereign being. <laughs> and that would be a sovereign being. And I like what you say when we do Fellowship of the Boards um, circles, mm -hmm. uh, beyond any of the stories. A way that you can touch the mystery, mm -hmm. not know it, right? But the a way you can touch it and be held is the feet under my ground and mm -hmm. the skies above, right? Or you say this whatever heavenly right. bodies, right. stars right. above, right? Um, there is a way for our bodies to feel safe mm. amidst the swirling of the storytelling, right? Right, because the stories are ebbing, flowing, receding, hijacking. Even when we have a story that's like centered in our being, mm -hmm. like even that's vulnerable to crumbling and falling apart. And when that does, it's like, all right, I still have ground beneath my feet and there's still like the stars above me. Right. And that's the body's story. Oh my gosh, which ties in like the rewilding consciousness. And right. I just want to create a compendium of all your work and integrate it <laughs> and say like, you know what? You could just write your own story. You could write your own story, and uh, I want to say And you this. do write your own stories. <laughs> and, and we do, <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, hmm. So, when the body, mm. when the body feels like you know, when the body story is like I don't feel good in my yeah. body, mm -hmm. or like my body's like falling apart, or my body's not working, and all of that sort of stuff is when it's a nice time to go into the mental stories. Uh-huh. And then when the mental stories are, like, too overwhelming, ah. and, like, oh, my goodness, like, what well, this could happen, and that could happen, that happen, that's when you go into the body story, and like, okay. And it's like this, we, uh -huh. could, we could dance uh -huh. back and forth between them, like, yeah. when we don't feel integrated. <sighs> From the mind, mm -hmm. um, I'm thinking about the note cards you made, mm -hmm. like the energy, mm -hmm. flip, flip note, the... What do you call that when you're studying in college? Flashcards. Okay. Right? The energy flashcards that you made. Okay. And the network 
um, the network of energy around the human body. Mm -hmm. When our body gets frightened and mm -hmm. our nervous system freaks out, like the mind kicks in. Mm -hmm. I mean, this is just basic like fight or flight, the, right. like, the nervous system science. What I was hearing next is actually the mind then sends out energy to the field mm -hmm. and starts to sense like the energy in your mm -hmm. field. And then you start to, like, emotions. Mm -hmm. You get charges, right? Mm -hmm. Like, your your field gets charged. You feel sad, or you feel angry, or you feel excited. So now the body has essentially, like, the body and mind have collaborated together to escape your presence mm -hmm. out into your field. Mm -hmm. And one could say that's dissociation or disembodiment. But also, I think that's like a way that the body and the mind are going out into your field and being like, there's something in your field you need to take care of. Go out here and take care of it and come back in. Okay. Right? Right. Like something like that, body, mind. Um, I mean, it's like almost like it sounds to me like a shamanic experience. Which is what a story waiting to, I'm sorry, right. I need to hit the books right. are. Right. A story waiting to pierce you talks about being in that stillness. Right. Carrying yourself as a shaman. Right. Everyone is their own shaman. Right. And when we can learn to like work that circuit, right. oh, I'm outside of myself to take care of something. Let me take care of it and come back in. Okay. Right? That's the stillness okay. that that like, avarice right. walks in. Right. That's the ecstasy. I was the thinking, ecstasy! The, the ecstasy. Yes. So I was thinking about this the Ooh. other day, and we'll get into this in the book, is like this idea, like the word ecstasy is used frequently in this book. And then the question has to come to, if you're, uh -huh. if you're a thinking person, uh -huh. if you're uh -huh. engaged in, in the narratives of your life, like, what does ecstasy mean? Mm -hmm. like, like, are you talking about orgasm? Like, mm -hmm. that's what most people would mm -hmm. go to. Mm -hmm. Are you talking about, like, being, like, high on DMT? Mm -hmm. Like, people could go to mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. Or is it something else? And so, like, to me, <clears throat> pondering this sort of question of like ecstasy, particularly in the context of this book, is it is you are no longer to, you are no longer caught up in your own story. Yeah. You are caught up in the field and the field. The field. Is, and yes. the field is carrying you. Yes. And that is like and that's where the magic yes. happens. Yes. Um I was, right. Because this doesn't necessarily mean something's wrong. Right. Like going from body to mind to out here. Right. Sometimes you're going into the astral body, which is right. like more immediately connected to like the oneness of right. all things beyond all dualism. And when you're and out of this, when you're out of this, is that state of ecstasy. Yeah. And the, that's when, like, the faith and the magic and all this stuff happens. <gasps> One last point before. Because, yeah, I know, I know. <laughs> um, so why is the podcast called Your Handbook to the Apocalypse? Why is it called Hijacking Reality? Mm -hmm. Because there is an undeniable, like, if you're paying attention, there's an mm -hmm. undeniable fact that it's all changing right mm -hmm. now. Mm -hmm. And... Mm -hmm. Um, if you're not freaking out, mm -hmm. if you're not freaking out right mm -hmm. now, it's because of one or two things. Mm -hmm. You are, um, so spiritually evolved that you're able to, like all the stuff we're talking about, like, yeah, of course, that's, you know, I'm living in the field in that, or you're so disconnected from mm -hmm. it that you're just like, you know, you're on all of the, all of the things that society, society is built into it. There's all of these things to numb your system so that you don't realize like you should be freaking mm -hmm. out right now. Mm -hmm. But everyone who's not in those extremes, you should be freaking out right now because <laughs> it's changing because that's a, because that. You should, when I'm saying should, would, you it know, would be silly. It would response. be an appropriate response. But the fact of the matter is, this is just part of the ebb and the flow yeah. of yes. this. Yes. And this is where, yes. like, the, the, like, finding mm. the faith in this thing that's beneath the story. Mm -hmm. And when you could mm -hmm. get there, mm -hmm. and how you get there is, like, all of these different techniques. And part of it is mental. Like, oh, we're just telling the story. Yeah. Is, like, then you can go and be carried by it during this transitory time. And hopefully, I mean, this is Mike's language, um, not necessarily be pulled into the Klaus Schwab New World Order next version, but an actual, like, yeah. meta-paradigm yes, shift. Yes, yes. My last point okay. is that ecstasy is not just an out-of-body experience. All right. If, we, if you can get to that state, and you like can keep your body open and mm -hmm. relaxed, effortless power, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. You can actually like that. That's the embodied experience of ecstasy, mm -hmm. right? Because this body is meant to feel really good. Really good. Really good. Not just orgasm, right? Right. But like, 
like all through your connective tissue right. and your muscles and your right. organs, like right. meant to like vibrate with vitality right. and energy. Right. right. That's what we're an antenna. Right. For the earth. Right. And the stars. And mm -hmm. so that's my final point. Is okay. That, is is that? Okay. Um. Yeah. All right. And that's what I like to help people do. That's is, what you help is, people do. And that's what I like to do for myself. Is all the practices and ways like that we can take care of this body so mm -hmm. that we can find places of ecstasy, body, mind, heart, soul, mm -hmm. and then bring it in and like feel, you know, mm -hmm. like those things. Yeah, like those things. <laughs> all right, we should read the book. All right, so we're going to begin with the forward. And so we'll, yes. All right, we're going to be handing the book yeah. back and forth. And there'll be times where we're going to pause because we've got to say something. We've got to say something. And that's just going to be how it's going to be. That's just how, yeah. All right. Okay. So why don't you begin? Oh, wait. Can what? I say one more thing? Of course you can. So Michael and I went to the National Shrine, the Grotto de Lourdes, serendipitously on the anniversary of Grotto de Lourdes 165 years ago. Mm -hmm. 56. Mm -hmm. um, what, and what's the Grotto? Grotto de Lourdes. Um, Grotto de Lourdes is in France. It is the place known for um, the sighting of an apparition of Mother Mary. Mm -hmm. And the Catholic Church said, yes, indeed, mm -hmm. that happened. Because mm -hmm. um, I'm sure lots of people have seen right. apparitions of, of Mother Mary. We were just coming home from a, a visit to Berkeley Springs, just to dip in the healing waters. And it was very, like, off the cuff, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. um, and while we were there, it happened to be the anniversary mm -hmm. of, of, of the Grotto de Lourdes in France. Mm -hmm. So this is like a replica uh, grotto here in Maryland, Maryland. Mm -hmm. um, and so we saw a really um, poignant... I want to just read the last line of this. <clears throat> this was a plaque which was the shrine the, the the place which we went to the national shrine mm -hmm. is like it's a big Catholic sort of thing with like lots of statues and like if I'm not a Catholic but I'm familiar enough with the experience mm -hmm. it's kind of like an outside church and there's plaques with it which kind of explain yeah. what you're looking at and so you're gonna yes. read you're gonna read one of the plaques yes I'm just gonna read the bottom part of it and this is so meaningful to me because it ties my work into this book, mm -hmm. which is such a simple, boiled-down reflection of your work. Like, this is kind of where we intersect. Okay. Um, Mary, as well as Christ, suffered in advance the bitterness of the passion. Suffered in advance the bitterness of the passion. Shortly after Christ's birth, the aged prophet Simeon while holding the infant Savior in his arms, promised Mary a life filled with suffering. Thy own soul a sword shall pierce, he prophesied. And so we have a story waiting to pierce us. Can you read that last, the last line about pierce? Mm -hmm. Thy own soul, uh -huh. thy own soul, a sword shall pierce. So a sword is going to pierce thy own soul. I mean, I think it's open to each person's interpretation. So, so, so certainly, so certainly, like the the Catholic Church, like really all the religions, like like they are a huge tinderbox, and that's like a whole nother. And and I certainly have like that that story to me is like a narrative, like oh yeah, your whole life is suffering, like that to me is goes in antithesis of what you were just saying about this body. I know, uh, but I know. that I being it. said. That being said, you, the, the, the line or the word mm. pierce. Yeah. And so maybe we'll come back to this like at the end of reading this, this story. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because this, I believe, is empowering. And in a lot of ways, like that, the context of the organization it's tied to and, and some of the, the, the more questionable elements, I, I want to go and touch that a little bit later. Yeah, passion and piercing and pa suffering. And, and I'm pretty certain passion, the actual definition, is suffering. 
The passion uh -huh. of Christ uh -huh. is the suffering of Christ. When you put the word passion, uh -huh. and then when we think about our like every passion, ecstasy, uh, all of these words. Oh my help. God! And what culture has done? And what oh. exactly hijacking of reality? All right. I'm excited to read this. All right, so let's go. Let's go.